that what you said? So, got some things. None of them are completely finished yet because um, a lot of these are charm uh, necklaces. So, when if they're going through online or a market, I'll be able to have a ton of charms laid out and people could pick their own. So, I have them just kind of like big ideas. This one. And I keep. <laughs> but I have a ton of this red chain made. I just really liked it. I always end up like... But this is actually just a chain you could put anything on. And it's handmade from copper electrical wire. Scrap wire. This is... It's very sturdy. And I actually really like how this gelatin, I call this a sh these gelatins because they're like shell skeletons. That looks really cool. And then maybe throw a simple argonon pendant on. And all these come with a bunch of charms. I love that. Might not be for everyone, but this is just an example anyway. And I mean, I haven't got nutmeg. Where are my campers at? I love stringing some nutmeg because then you always have some to add, or just keep as a nice little nutmeg charm. And a few French beaded pendants. Oops. Again, all of this is electrical wire. And that's why I'm keeping like the designs pretty dang simple and a little um, like this. And I didn't really have a plan for it. I just had uh, two pieces of wire and a glass marble and figured uh, I'd see what I could come up with with just that. I tell you what, I really like it. <laughs> And I have some starbursts, I think. Right now I'm going to make some charms, some French beta charms to put in the center. And a ton of different types, types of pendants. And again, like these can be really loaded up. And I, wear, I tend to wear a bunch when I go out. I actually... Um, do a lot of manual labor, so I'm working I like some sturdier pieces. And so I started making this chain for my pendants that I wear and see if that's any oops, keep adding stuff. I keep the chain end just like that. So you could slip things on very easily. And the hook just hooks on, and you could bend it if you want to keep it nice and closed. But the reason I'm going with these hooks, if this gets pulled, this hook will unbend and releasing the necklace, so no injuries. And I tried to make that really, like, not weak, but not super, super rigid, so it wouldn't break. And um, something you could just bend right back in shape. And something made out of the same material. I really want this all to be salvaged copper and shells and things that I find here. And there. I really like the whole neck mess of it all. And this is just, I'm going to be giving away um, just some shells. And I really like wearing and something just, it feels very good to have, um, Something long and natural or creative, but I love things on long chains, and these ball chains are pretty.
pretty dang sturdy. I think everyone could appreciate a ball chain. They're simple to come by. Because, um, I know this chain isn't for everyone. I also have suede leather, vegan leather, and they're pretty much fine. It's just about anything. And I really like the ones that are... These are uh, just vintage glass beads as well as crystal chips. And again, all salvaged from broken jewelry, vintage jewelry. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm talking about these last few days. Thank you. This is my favorite right now, but I think there's too much space between this here, so I'm trying to rework it. I try to keep it also as simple as possible because really it's the materials that I think is the the coolest part about these and the colors and just found this the other day <coughs> doesn't have the hole here but if it did it would be fun to hold, uh, hang more charms off of but I love the hole in the side of the bead I mean shell I just paid it with some fluorite and all electrical wire. This electrical wire, the thicker stuff is from a fire pit. And it's just going to go into a landfill. Right now it's a beautiful necklace, in my opinion. And, and I have, um, I put spaces in between each link. You could use the hook and just hook into a link if you need it shorter or longer. But I put some specific spaces in case you want it a little longer. And if you send me your measurements, I can make it um, exactly from choker to pretty standard. And um, I can always put more extension on it. Um, color combinations always. And this, I'm not too sure this is why I like doing custom stuff, because everything that I make on my own, I um, either get severely attached to, or um, I don't know when to finish them, because I, I can't conceptualize who, who's going to wear it. And um, when I make stuff, I like making a lot, so I'm trying to make finished pieces and get out of that sensation of feeling like it's not finished. But it feels a little unfinished for some reason. That's just me, I guess. But, um, Rajoshka seed and uh, Atlantic Coast shells. I love finding these ones. They look, they're just such, the, the classic shell shape and the ridges and the colors. Like this one has some orange spots. There's a lot of variation in them. This big boy. And they sound really nice. And it's a choker, and again, I can make it with longer, shorter bracelets, anklets, belts, anything. And I'm more than happy to show you how to do it too. And this head pin is just made from another piece of scrap copper. I really need to find the micro torch. Um, shoot. Oh, where did I put it? I just got like um, this lighter, a jet lighter, because it was at This. And also you can hang it, you know, wherever, I guess. <laughs> but it, I made the hook onto the chain link, so it's easy to put on. And you got it where this side, where this side, wherever you decide. And this is a, um, oh, what is it called? My brain turns to mush as soon as I hit stream. 
but again just the salvage copper and like these are the chains that you're able to slip the stuff on and off these are going to come with more terms too but unfortunately you're going to have to bend it to put it on if you want to change the terms on the ones with the chips um this one i believe your eight no might have a hard time so that's the chains I'm making now because um, I really like being able to uh, how do you like rearrange the charms or just wear one of them and just wear the plain chain or put your own charms on it because they're you know, I don't want to talk myself up too much but I really do like these chains they're cathartic to me they take a while but I really really love how they come out and um the hook in the back is <clears throat> really easy to slip on so uh, perfect for anybody I really like it that just feels like um a little bit of treasure or something I um been collecting shawls my whole life and I make myself jewelry with it and I wear it quite often like this is one of my favorite stones I've ever found on the beach Odin stones some people call them hag stones I don't know why it took me so long to make some charm like necklaces and then um not like in a creative font, just um output hasn't been very abundant. They're making a lot of doodles and learning a ton. I kinda go through phases of ingesting and then digesting and then um like Producing, I suppose, and um, I like getting the producing phase. I just can't help it. I really like um, little magical feeling things. And here's a little tree of life made also with the salvaged copper wire. And I really do want to start practicing with more wire wrapping and um, like using the micro torch to add the bald ends to things. I, some wire wrappings are so fluid and the techniques used to hold the stones are so brilliant and I really want to try to um, set some stones with wire wrapping. And I've never succeeded in it. I always end up chipping the little stones because um, I usually just get the glass stones to practice with because that can get quite pricey. I um, set a sapphire stone and it was a sapphire that I was just gifted from an older woman when I was a child and I did chip it. However, still very I, it was the, the only stone I had at the time. Yeah, there's a little chip in it. I still feel so guilty about that. And I'm like, why did I put it in this? Because there, it's not like you can see the color or anything. I mean, it was really smoky. It was really dark. It was hardly opaque. However, um, can't help but have a little crafter's regret. <laughs> But I still really, really, really enjoy this piece. It's just salvaged or uh, scrap silver, like broken chains that I melted into a ball, hammered the heck out of it, and then domed it, just carving a little piece of wood. And let me And um, just put the little cup 
<laughs> and the copper uh, ring part itself is actually copper pipe, like plumber's pipe. I wasn't able to um, make my own <laughs> ring, uh, the ring itself yet. All the wire I have is too thin, and pipes work like a charm. And this cutter thing that you turn the wheels and really clever gadget. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but really useful. And it's um, how I make the treasure coins too. Little brass treasure, treasure coins. I think I have some. Oh yeah, that's a problem. But they're great to signify treasure, like if you're making a little treasure chest. It's just brass wire. Cut tiny little slips with it and hammer them flat. Treasure coins. Cob coins. But now. Yes, sure. I'm gonna change. Yeah, if anybody wants uh, seashells from Florida, I just put them on these ball chains because they're easy and they're stainless steel and quite satisfying. So I also, oh my god, I found so much leather. Leather, yeah, leather. I couldn't believe it. So, uh, I guess um, the person whose leather this was was a saddle maker, and a lot of the stuff in there was um, pleather that melted, and so I, I, it was on the side of the road, it was tossed, so I said, you know what, I feel like there's real leather in here, and I think I should grab it, so I threw in this stuff was trunk, real leather. So this is going to make so much jewelry, and it's all, it's all, like, it's all been cleaned, and it's going to be, um, even more so. I'm already trying to figure out how I'm going to do that, because even if I don't make anything that ends up on a shop or anything, I know, I'm going to make so much out of this, and, um, wow. I went to Mood Fabrics when I was younger, I was lucky enough to go to Mood, and it was one of my childhood dreams, I grew up watching Project Runaway. And, um, really cool spot for fabric. And I got one leather and one, um, like, uh, I, got, I got two skins. And, uh, this was pretty, I can't believe it. Pink, suede, real. I can't believe it. Green, yellow, orange, black, red. Like a bunch of metallic, like the orange is really nice. Feels like lambskin or something. Mustn't waste, does it? And it's so soft. It's it's. I was really stoked. I cannot. I still can't believe, believe it. And um. All okay. I got a basket full. And a ton of scraps, which was like one of the most entertaining things to go through. I love getting craft supplies from uh, artists or crafters that are no longer using like the supplies and it's just overstock or things that they haven't touched in years. That's the kind of supplies I love finding. And I'll, offer up, I'll find like bins and bins full of beads. And it's a really fun talking to the people who like was using the stuff. And B, you get to see like like this, I finally figured out what it was. There's a bunch of these cut. It's a riding crop top thing. I don't know what it's called, but that's what it was. And then the other ones are stitched and already starting to think, so that's pretty cool. And um, at, at the yard sale, I went to their yard sale the day before and they had two beautiful saddles there. And some rhinestone still. Just really like perfect. And these scraps, I know I'm going to be using. I use scraps of leather and a lot of stuff. And in metalwork and any form of like um, craft.
across where your fingers are dremeling. I put leather across my lap. I hold, like, even this tiny little scrap right here. Holding this while doing is brilliant. And you're not going to get hurt or burnt and stuff like that. And, yeah, so. That was a school burn. It's just on the side of the room. And scraps. Really, 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 really nice. I'm going to pull some out. Oh, use some. Like if you look on uh, Pinterest, like leather scrap jewelry, you see, it's used extensively, even just the scraps. And I'm really stoked to put the scraps in resin. Resin part. Yeah. This thing is sweet too. I have not stopped fingering this whole whole thing. Look at it. It's got that gray. That soft, smooth gray um, rock. I wish I was. Um, oh, what is that called? It, like, it has to have a name. It's uh, all my shells are outside still, but the older shells like have this like stone like coating, like this dark gray. And it's really smooth. This piece of coral. And my head. Oh, I'm sorry. Through it. Got a Denmark <laughs> coin here. Damn. What the heck happened? Like there's like a melted crayon. That's just in the this is the creation station we're in. It is not a living space. It is there. I make a mess. <laughs> Just trying to get even. Get even like that. So when I do <clears throat> get back during markets, when I find a goodie, I plan on having a bucket full of cords, different cords, ribbons, all kinds of stuff. And like, I'm sure other people have done this or like want to do something like this. And then in the other bin, I'll have like tons of different shells, charms, stuff like that. And then people could just put, make their own little special piece um my whole life like everybody I know myself included always had you know a random found object on a cord and I think that's some of the most poetic jewelry anytime I see somebody with like a mystery object on a cord I'm like where did you find that tell me the story and I know like there's a lot of jewelry that's sold already like that but it always just reminds me of like an artifact and it's just a hunk of coral with a natural hole in it. Uh, <clears throat> the saying goes, if there is a hole, there is a goal. And that is indeed true in the world of crafting with seashells. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's pretty cool though. And bonus points, because you can be like, ah, what's that one? I don't know this guy. <clears throat> I usually have a, <laughs> if I'm walking somewhere at night, I usually have a, a piece of iron under my sleeve. I grew up in a town called Lakeworth. <laughs> it's a beautiful place, my favorite place on this planet. And this is all I have left to make. I can make, I think, um, maybe this too. Like three more, maybe four more um, of those hooks. And then I'm gonna have to dig. I have a big old garbage, not garbage thing. You know, steel tubs, ether. Steel tubs for washboarding. Washboard. Yeah, washboard. <laughs> it's like I'm waterboarding. Um, washboarding. And uh, 
I'll have that fill to the brim with scrap copper. This is the but I'm out. Ooh. Score. Can I drop it? Oh, I already picked it up. I'm almost out of the stuff I'm using to make the chain. And when that happens, I'm going to have to start uh, harassing the neighbors. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it salvaged, so um, I'm trying to avoid like getting a wool of it. Uh, that's different if like stuff was like electrical projects, then I could just use fist scraps and maintain salvage. But I don't want to just buy copper wire. That's easy. Um, I, I make I make things as difficult as possible for myself. So, <laughs> I can't just buy the copper. And plus, I have a few books on my shopping list, so as soon as my hand sees some cash, I am going straight to eattheweeds.com to buy a green beans book. I will find my own copper. I had a Boston long sleeve t-shirt I really want. Um, when I was a kid, the only t-shirt I really wanted was Boston, the band, um, uh, the UFO cover. That's like my favorite album in existence. Well, one of many, but that album was a masterpiece and huge one for Boston. <clears throat> I really like Boston and I realized there's all these, uh, printing shops that even pinback shirts are easy to come by. Cause gosh, you buy a real pinback shirt on eBay they're like 200 bucks now. And um, I lost one. So I really want the either a baseball shirt style Boston shirt like um like that, or just a long sleeve t-shirt. And let's see, uh, really that is you know I'm I'm a simple simple chaotic human being, but, yeah, as far as my, like, this isn't, that's, um, what's on my mind right now. It's been such a long time, think I should be good, time doesn't work for me, I think I'm so I want to cover that whole album, then, honestly. <laughs> that is such a treat. And um, I never got to really see the full live, I believe, Met Stadium. Because, yeah, I grew up without internet. And, um, like, I, I use, right now, like, the internet pretty much just for um, rabbit holes and listening to music and fulfilling goals. But, um, yeah, for a long time I um, didn't have a computer even, like, I was just kind of human feathering around. I lived right next to the beach, and uh, generally I'm a pretty self-content person. I um, uh, really, really, really value, like, um, all the natural spots and being able to sit in under trees. I just can't... I don't know, I wish I had that comfort level indoors, but there's something, I uh, just, um, outdoors, <laughs> and with it, there's a, the best cell service. I mean, now I'm sure it's different. Not out here, though. In the swamps, it's nothing. That's what I really do the bike streams. The quality is, like, Swiss cheese. But... I really like being outdoors. I forgot what I was talking about to begin with. <laughs> yeah. This is how I did it, and um, I did it. Uh, 
a little bit more intense. So I'll use the Tematite bead. Is it Hema like? Hema light or something? And um, these are like conical. So the tips of them are much better than the bottoms of them. I wish I was outside, but it's very overcast. So you just, if you want that thickness, that's about a three wrap thickness. Excuse my verbiage, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Pull it to that sweet 90 degree. It's not gonna be perfect 90 degree because we're the round nose flare. <laughs> And then how I do is just wrap around like that. And then from here, kind of roll it where you want it. Because I do like trying to make a decent looking circle. And just fiddle. Let's see. I try to get to like that. A little awkward to hold. And I use these flat bits. Oh, no, sorry. I say that every stream. It's okay. I use that flat bit to hold that loop. Because then you have a lot of freedom to pull. And I use my thumb to kind of guide it. And turn. Another turn. And I do three loops. And I wasn't paying attention. Oops. <laughs> I left too much space. But that's okay. Because I'm going to save this one. I'm going to make a bracelet specifically with a little extra room in between each bead. So you could um, kind of fiddle with them. And um, roll them around because usually they're quite quite tight on that wire. I like um, that personally, but I wanted to see if um, it would be satisfying to have a looser bracelet with the bees loose because I have bees. I have dice, a bunch of dice beads, but I also have my little just humble stash of lamp work beads. And like these, I think would be really nice to be able to spin around for those into that thing. Like, lens, eyes. Mm. I really like black and white lamp work beads. I think they go really cool with the like natural stuff. I really, really like, um, gosh, what's that era of, like you see it in a lot of like really, really, really like dripping uh, old French apartments and I'll be like fuchsia or red walls and like with fuchsia and red curtains just like a lot of like reds and pinks and then um, pops of like a bunch of the paintings and the like gilded frames so gold red pinks pops of greens and then the black and white tile <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I really like buildings. And it's funny because I'm an outdoors person. I hate being inside, but I love buildings for some reason. And it's something I, I don't conceal this passion one bit. <laughs> it's, I claimed I, um, in high school, my big thing was I have a boner for buildings. But I'm not even kidding. I could walk around a building and appreciate every single, like, because, yeah, principal, or pyramids are cool and all. Like, I still don't really fully have a full like solid opinion on what they were used for because I, I don't think they were temples and um but like and when I was younger younger I did, wasn't quite taken by skyscrapers I um kind of wish like why couldn't we make like uh like beautiful architecture and stuff like that until I realized what goes into building a skyscraper and now I simply see it like I like the mirrored ones now because it reflects the clouds and it's a really nice um, visual for me. I just enjoy it. And all the math and like, it's just, that's what I see now. It's just like, um, like technical, just like, like numbers. <laughs> it's um, impressive. And um, 
I especially like deco buildings. I like the um, kind of modernizing, like the almost like some of the, the my favorite buildings have like a Roman vibe, and um, like they'll have like beautiful deco building, and then it'll just be like um, Mars. I always get the Grecian and the Romans confused when I'm talking um, about the ability to do I'm trying to get out of that thing. Because um, there's a lot of times I can't get things and I like that. Uh, I, I, I really do um, prefer books and videos as opposed to, um, I don't know. I've brought in focus and concentration now, so I'm trying to go back to my roots in a way. I, and growing up without internet, just use books for everything, and um, I really value that because uh, I, I like digging through pages and like one paragraph, like I know some things come, I, I don't know, there's so many like, all the context is there and like, it, I, li I really like that. And, um, articles, like, books I could easily go and see discussions about on that book, but articles, it's, there's so many, and I don't, I don't fare well, like, researching online, because I just end up on YouTube listening to music, and, um, so I really like, you know, sitting up, why am I doing this so far now? again. Just a hair too much space. But this will go in the on the experimental bracelet. There's a, a, that slight little bit of wiggle room. And I'm gonna keep that for the fidget bracelet. Alright, for real this time. <laughs> Once more with flavor. I mean feeling. Once more with flavor. <laughs> I do have to get outside to pick mulberries really bad. I'm wondering maybe there's something I could print on um, like a 3D printer that I could use to hold the phone here. Because I just kind of shove y'all in whatever I'm wearing. <laughs> but sometimes I do want to take a break in here to go outside. I'm going to grab a sip of something. Just to see it's so hot in here. Don't hate the sun. So never hurt no one. I'm just thinking about that. Sun is really something good.
It's really nice outside. So, the rain. Hello. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I have a tendency to disappear sometimes. But, the rain is holding back. So, I want to go capture some of what is going on. Because, um, it's finally in season. So, finally, starting to get as much as possible in the rain. And... So obviously, the mulberries, mm, I should not have walked over here, they're really addicting. Decided the whole front area is going to mulberries, so um, trying to find more varieties for zone 10. The Wakisa is doing really, really good. You'll see it. <laughs> okay. So, this is cassava. It grows really interestingly. But this is um, a little burnt. However, this is curry leaf tree. Well, curry tree. I believe curry leaf and curry tree are something different, but. Very interesting, very interesting aroma. I haven't cooked with the apple egg or not. And, um, this was a gift from my friend CJ. It's a self-seeding tree, so a lot of sprouts will pop up. And as soon as there's more sprouts, I'll be passing them on to the next person. And um, got some bananas. And this is the front area. It was just all, all the mulch broke down and it overgrew, so it's all been recently excavated. And um, the sun, the full sun in, out here could be quite intense, so I had to actually spend a few years just throwing up some shade. <laughs> the last little sad pineapple. But I'm waiting for over here because look at all the seeds. These. And so many pop up, I don't even bother trying to grow them, like uh, start them in the pots anymore. And just pick them up because when I start pots, I, I start a lot. So, avoiding any loss this year, I'm just kind of starting what is necessary. And this lantana, 100% free. It just popped up in the in the garden. And this was claimed to be the future of mosquito. Um, how do you say like to keep mosquitoes away? <laughs> it smells so good. So what I do with this is I dry the leaves and I grind them down with other herbs to make an outdoor incense cone for mosquitoes, uh, usually with lemongrass, but I'll use whatever I have and like whatever curiosity, um, whatever I do want to share. Oh, Look at how many. Papaya. And that was just from seed. This is just from a seed. And it's so big. And then, um, I actually got bees. The bees are right there. On this pile. This is um, going to be breaking down, so it's gorgeous. And it keeps this from drying out and uh, keeps cars from driving in. Um, kid you not, a car full of drunk teenagers drove through the gate. Or drove through the gate, the fence. And, um,. It, it was actually a little sketchy because they kept um, going on and on about being armed and like they were wasted and um no no like nothing happened or anything but um well <laughs> it went right it just so the car went so far into the forest so really started making it a point to plant up and um build kind of like a little security section because um cars will go right through something and unfortunately uh not unfortunately not unfortunately at all um i have a, some rad of people live out here and that's what i love about it uh a lot of true Flor Floridians meaning like 
you know, dirt bikes, ATVs, swamp buggies, all that, and um, and I love that. And ooh, what's that? And uh, so it's wise to have them at that because some people haul haul and yeah, better be safe than sorry. I look so tired. <laughs> Here's the Wakisa. Now these are a lot longer than the Everbearing. And the color... Really, really nice. You can see, uh... Celia Zacatichichi, or Mexican Dreamer, going all, all through it. There's more slowly turning. The whole tree's full. And this is the first year fruiting. I'm really, really excited about that. And this is Mark's chocolate sapote that just finally taller than me. Officially. <laughs> and um, all new growth, really soft, beautiful leaves. The what's it called? The monstera has new growth on it. Alright. The huge the biggest leaf is the newest leaf. We can actually move that. And the, uh, feel these. This is the secret. It's really, really good in salsa, all kinds of stuff. But what happens if you refrigerate <gasps> meat that's cooked with it? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, this actually, really, really cool tree to, uh, to cook on. To use the fire, uh, the wood to cook on. But, it sours things in the strangest way. And um, like if you put, if you cook like a piece of meat on a grill with that, it's gonna taste so good. It almost tastes like um, like it was made with like wood soaked in teriyaki or something. Or something. something, it's like salty. It, it puts a really interesting flavor in it. But if you put it, that leftovers in your fridge, it sours everything. Strangest phenomenon there. <laughs> Sea grape wood. Mmm. I haven't eaten enough of this one yet. This is a baby. And in a few years, that will be this. And this is actually in full sun, so the leaves are very tiny. There's some larger ones, you can see. I noticed the sea grape has reached the sun finally, so that must what trigger all the growth. Because oh, the other nice. one, it's alive, but um, hasn't reached the I sun. I can totally see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Gonna have a sea grape there, tree. He's so cool. Oh, it's brand new, bro. Brand new. I love that feeling. The leaves get really big. They make perf perfect plates. And, um... Uh, I love how they see it. Nope. <laughs> this is also really... Yeah, I freed that. It was really buried under like a leaf of vines. Yeah, that's one thing. Like, it might seem like growing slow, but like half of the work is... Yeah, just maintaining it. Yeah, that's... Fighting the, the... <laughs> oh my gosh, especially the Brazilian pepper. That we really want to start using for, to making gates and stuff. Because you can take a lot of them, the saplings, and they shoot straight up. That's what I want to, want them because then that's straight wood. Three straight uh, sticks to make the little fence things. Right, right. So you put like three pieces of PVC pipe or something and then could weave it through it. I always wanted to do that. You see the prolific. We've uh, cut these from the park, but look, it's just, it turns into grass almost. Yeah. And I've been pulling those out and repacking those and I know you have as well. I really want to try to grow one inside because if these could grow in a container. Yeah, that's true. It'd be nice to have. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. This? Do that today. I mean, that's pretty big. It's pretty big, but show the big one. It's not right. It's like from Mars or something. Like, it's got a trunk. And I'm sure, like, it's, it's so big. I've never seen them. Yeah. <laughs> That's no joke. Jurassic. And it's not, there's no sharp parts on it. I like the century plants because they get really big like that. Century plant is blue gobe, I believe. And, um, that one? Oh, no, not that one. 
but really, really sharp. So for dogs and. Oh, look at this thing Ooh. collapsing down. If you could demonstrate that, it must be like quite five feet tall. I got a tart one. Mhm. Mm uh huh. This one, because bear in the winter. This is the wakisa. This was grown from a six-inch cutting from eBay. And when the fruits, the branches, because see how the branches are very long. And so I noticed that's why they're drooping, because like there's this tree. Doesn't it look like a, like an ancient Mediterranean garden tree? I mean, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm just fantastical or something. But see how it's drooping? Can you see the droop? Yeah. Oh, a little pond or something under that would be so nice. Real quick, was this the, one of the things you gave me in a little Dixie cup? Mm. No, you bought it in the I bought um, a bundle of four cuttings on eBay and only one survives. And it's this one. You do get a lot of everbear in there. <laughs> Look at all of them. Look at the snitch. I go on eBay tonight. Um, I keep forgetting. That's a high priority because it just grows so well. Mm -hmm. it's only, it's Someone only trimmed a ever, uh, mulberry tree out here and uh, Walter, uh, Walter and I filled the trunk with as many cuttings as possible. Sat there for like two days processing them and planting them and not a single one. Um, I was surprised, it was the first time. They, it must have been trimmed too far, but the leaves looked good and everything. So that was the first time I didn't. Uh, got a uh, mulberry cutting tree, and there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of them. The strawberry cherry is slowly coming back because it gets a little sparse off the season. Oh, yeah, the um, mulch, um, the mulch is all uh, you know, what it doesn't last long and um, it processes back into earth really fast. And like it'll be like the nicest soil, but the wind will take yeah, take a lot of it. You should the logs, like I like logs here and break them down. Yeah, this know. stuff too is what it is. That's the palm tree, it's the palm tree. This helps the pot so well. Mm -hmm. Oh! That's what that is. You know what? This would ignite pretty good on top of a pot too. That. Oh, that's, that, that's good pot. It's hard, um, sometimes, that's why I really, uh, focus on starting things directly in the ground that's for here, because it's really hard to make sure pots don't dry out, but there's little things that you could do, like this stuff. This is great for orchids, too. See it? It's everywhere. And up there, you see that, like, tuft of fur? Yeah, that's free. Yeah. It's like coconut coir, essentially. And you put this at the bottom of your pots, a few layers of it, and it keeps your pots from drying out. And your pots won't dry out as nearly as fast as it's you do. It's also a guaranteed fire starter. Yeah, guaranteed yeah. fire starter. And it looks like fabric. When I was a kid, I was convinced this was like where fabric came from. Yeah, you can handle that, huh? Yeah. Thatching. I believe this is called. What's that called? A thatch? Yeah, I think thatch is. How's the vanilla? That's old. Yeah. Vanilla bean orchid. Incredible. This probably has to be the highlight. Yeah, and it probably gets super easy from cutting. You just make sure you have one of those roots and then um, let it dry out. It's. That's one of Not the had favorite. a single problem with it. It's never needed water, never needed no. anything. Just uh, keep it, keep the coconuts off of it and keep them off your head. Yeah. So look at the pile. If you show the pile of coconuts, all right. But this is, oh yeah. Uh, look how many there are. Yeah. Remember last year though, we were picking them from this one. Uh huh. Yeah. That's an insane amount of growth. Yeah, because you can see, look, just how close to the ground. For no irrigation, no nothing. Was, it's just shot. It was really close yeah. to the uh -huh. Now it's all the way up there. Yeah. yeah. So that's literally where that's insane. Walking up. And you can see how how crazy the differences in between trees are. The three. This one's cool. Australian paper tree. <laughs> Can't figure out something cool to do with this. Even painting it and then laying it on canvas 
Let's do like prints. That would be cool. I really want to see some paintings. Got too many blank spots on the wall. Oh, it's a really dense kind of wall. I think that's Taro. Yeah, definitely is. Did you find? I mean, there's Hudson over here. Oh, really there's like a papaya here. Yeah, no, it has to be one of those. The papaya here? Yeah, it was, but it's the wee one. That big one is the one doing good, but the wee one has no leaves on it, but I can see it. Make it oh, I think it's fine. Okay. This thing is just nuts. Mm -hmm. Wish we could get it to uh, meet Bert. Oh, maybe you have to do something. Yeah, I've done the deal research. Mm -hmm. I know the fresh paddles are edible and they're really, really good. Probably the tip of the cake, like sauteed. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Sauteed. Some strips is really good. It almost tastes like green bean. Mm hmm. Or like a green, like, um. Oh, I, wasn't this the one we cut in half and we put the top over here and the bottom died? Yeah. It's too close to the house. That's when you, you, you always learn lessons of how, uh, how close you should plant to things. And, oh my uh, god, there's a cavern of water under it. Yeah, you learn a lot the, the wrong way. The boot is, grew so fast and I dug it out. It had um, a huge like cavern of water underneath it. Well, that moringa is doing fine and that one was like, yeah, I think, an accidental one. I got big it. Oh, and um, did it spread? I'm sure because I think a while ago I saw pods on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, cool. Seeds on it. I really gotta go out here and take the rest of that. Mmm, olive tree. This actually a, was a replacement. We had a localized one, but um, it was mowed over. Not by either of us. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Alright, now I'm done. It happens. I my lying tree died. It happens. But, you know what? The bright side is, is I'm going to be able to use the bandsaw to make slices out of it to see what its core looks like. Or, I can use it for a jewelry stand or something. A walking stick. I like the walking stick, actually. <laughs> Here's the lying lying tree. Mm -hmm. special. Yeah, I kept the bay leaf tree too. Yeah. This is why also I want to focus on stuff that is only grown locally because then it ensures survival. It could get really intense Otherwise, out here. Otherwise, have a bunch of reminders in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got quite a collection. Yeah. Ling Ling. That was a sad one to lose. Yeah. I grew it from seed and it took like two to four months to germinate in an egg carton. <laughs> Probably to a good size. Yeah. It got to be taller than you. Which was pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, it's the only tree I like. Uh, like tree tree. Because the mulberries, tree, I think yeah. of them as kind of not a shrub, but like a shrubby tree. Yeah. Well, this this could have gotten real big. For me to see them as big as they are now. Like, I'm definitely seeing them like blue trunks like a tree. Yeah, he said. Like a shrub. I didn't even I didn't know anything about what he said when it said zone ten. I was just looking for the cheapest cuttings. I go to cuttings, um, mulberry cuttings, zone ten, lowest price first. U U.S. only. Usually, like I think I put like a thousand miles from like zip code. Cause um. 
Yeah. I've, I've failed a lot of plants and it's because of just not compatible to this area. No. And, uh, but there's thousands. Yeah. <laughs> there's thousands that are. And like, not only like thriving plants, but useful plants, historical plants, native plants. And um, the native plants are a no brainer because, like, I mean, even the chaya, the chaya brings that uh, black and yellow butterfly. Uh, Hundreds of them. Sick, and the Spanish needle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lantana bush, which I think. The Lantana bush. Uh, that one's nice. I think there's three now. I saw yep, a third and one. There's one popping up somewhere. Uh, Dry wood. Yeah, uh, okay, there's one over there. And I found another one somewhere that I have to. Uh, I didn't take it out. Pink and yellow flowers didn't plant a single one of them, and they're really, really nice to look at. They look like Easter flowers or something, and uh, of course butterflies love them. I really want the American Beauty Berry. That's one thing that I've wanted my whole life. Uh, the the um, like willow and old man blue, the homeless people of Lake Worth. I don't know what else to say. Uh, rest their souls, because none of them are around anymore. But they used to make wine from the American Beauty Berry. But I need to see jars of it everywhere. <laughs> Especially in the spots that I go. I like the little nature spots and I always find a jar of American Beauty Berry. I mean, I'll find jars of other stuff too, but. I really can't get over it. All of these trees are less than five years old. 100% mm -hmm. free. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why I'm trying to force myself to stream every day. Because dang it, I'm, dang, I'm very self content. And I'm non stop growing stuff, non stop creating stuff. And I spend such a small amount of money doing it. And really, not even that much effort. Um, I get a lot of joy enjoyment out of like little things, I suppose, and um, more than happy to share that with just about anybody. Hello, Aspen. We was walking around. I said I got quite a lot growing. I was gonna walk back up front. The branch in my tree, small days. The branch in my the branch in my tree. Jesus. The branch in my hand was the langwang tree that just died. I don't know if it just died, but I just noticed it died. <laughs> Very, um, I, I just wanted to show you. Look at that cavern. The, the Chaya tree spinach. Oh, there's the butterflies. Chaya tree spinach. Really great to grow. It's a perennial food source for greens. But one thing to be wary of is the roots are very shallow. And they grow big. They grow big for the root size. Um, every single one of them. Uh, has toppled over and um, it's just something to be mindful of and um, so play something like in the yard or somewhere where if it topples over it's not the biggest deal and if you don't have a lot of wind in your area you don't even have to worry about that uh, it gets very windy very windy out here right across the street some swamps swamp swamps um, like grasslands and swamps and um, I think I'm walking too far in the yard and the service is going to get weird. But the wind is really, really intense. I have to remember to try to film it because, holy, I'm surprised there's any mulberries left on the tree. I'm walking over to this lantana bush here in Florida. I believe it's a native. And um, the butterflies love it. I love it. Mosquitoes hate it. Um, I actually make an outdoor incense cone with these. And... They deemed it as like the future of mosquito repellent, but then I didn't hear much about that. We didn't plant a single one of these. They just pop up and this one's huge. And they're like little Easter flowers. Pink and yellow, this one is. And they smell incredible. Isn't that perfect? Didn't grow a single one. And there's another one. Just threw this broken little piece of star of India in the ground. So we're walking around and it's rooted and it's growing. Here's the other one. I 
Mm. 100% friggin' like you could see the seed, so take some of the ripe ones. Oops, grab some of the green. And I'll see the. Right here. I see this area start up. It's kind of chaotic. But then, we get anything that isn't useful out. I usually leave some of the Spanish needle. There's some cassava or tapioca, uh, yuca. And this is the front area where it's full, full sun and a lot of wind. So this thing is pretty cool too. And this grows from cuttings. So if anybody wants to grow those, got to. And um, full sun. I had to spend a few years just trying to get some shade out here. And because. Um, Right now, we're uh, growing out an uh, edible Eden, if you will. Five years into this project, just, you know, personal project. Aren't these gorgeous? Look at these little wildflowers. Some poor man's pepper next to it. Very cool. I'm gonna try it. This is Cuban oregano. Nice flowers. And this is another one of those things, you just break it and stick it in the ground and you have it growing wherever you stick it. And you can even root it by leaf. And um, it's like everywhere over here. And um, Monstera plant, there's going to be cuttings available very soon. It's starting to shoot. Yeah. So I'm going to cut here and a little farther back make more plants. This was gifted to me um, by a neighbor. Uh, they were giving away the fruits to try. Look at that. Oh, hey! Oh, what happened there? I thought... What did I see? Oh, wow. Oh. Maybe I'll try to... Huh. Wow. Oh. This thing is really happy. What the heck? Look at this like a flag. Isn't that crazy? I know everyone grows these. I know like everyone's seen a damn monster cup. But I am I always wanted one of my own. Like a big one. And um somebody gave us a tiny little cutting. I asked for fruit and it rooted and it's really happy. And uh so my goal with it is to make a few cuttings to then pass along to others. That's how pretty much I have um any variety uh, other than just foraging for cuttings and seeds. You know, obviously not in a nature preserve, but if you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of seed pods, take them home with you and try to grow them. Then you get some free plants. Or get some free plants. Like, plants are one of the best gifts that gives them your own. Um, maybe someone that like wants a plant because I feel like it also could be very depressing. Because <laughs> like, well, nobody wants to kill a plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Look at my, look at my haggard. Wait, haggard? Is that? I forgot what this is. Reverted back to my true Floridian form. And mm, I'm much happier. <laughs> I was getting so down. Just um, I used humor. And um, a cheerful disposition to keep myself out of like, you know, basic human negative thought patterns, I guess. Really easy to fall into that. And um, just trying to keep my lips about me. <laughs> Honestly, okay. Unless I could just put right here. I'm guaranteed that it will root. There's some random things. Yeah, craft time. Back to work. <clears throat> Different strokes. Different thoughts. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Oh, Illinois. Wow. wow, wow, wow. 
Um, I'm sure y'all have uh, species of mulberry that'll grow in that area. I could look that back too. Um, mulberry to grow in. Wow. So the best mulberry, just a quick Google search. Uh, best mulberry varieties for the Northwest and other regions of the U.S. is the Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. Prized for its tasty one to one half inch long fruit and its long ripening season, late June, June to early fall. And mulberry is the tree fruit. Oh, it's one of my favorite fruits. I'll be right. Mulberries and mangoes. Mm -hmm. Florida, there's a different species of mango pretty much on every block. Well, there used to be. But the Illinois or the mulberry you don't need rooting hormone. You could just snap the branch off and stick it in the ground. And gosh, you could turn a little corner into a mulberry orchard overnight. And um, they stay pretty small. I don't know about the mulberry everberry. Uh, Illinois is everberry, to be fair, um, as far as how big it gets. But they're really an easy tree to keep around really just don't see them causing any issues um, some do uh, some do um, have pests and I know like caterpillars um, I like silkworms I'm not sure about the species it's one thing I wish I knew far more about because it's it is definitely my favorite thing to grow and my favorite thing to eat all my words because all winter I'm just like I can't wait for the dead of summer I'd rather be sweating yeah <laughs> so this is the time of year that I'm going to have to start eating my words because all winter I'm like saying oh, I want the dead of summer it gets it it gets really hot like you, like it feels like instead of like walking in air you're swimming in humidity Ooh. something's happening to it
through these. Ooh. Find some spots. Um, I haven't read about yet. Really, really, really. Can't believe we found this. Well, that's just one of those Walgreens books. Um, they're never on sale, so I only have one because um, they're very expensive. And I got lucky enough to buy. Sinkhole appears in your hometown. Uh oh, of uh, Look, there's a coin in it. Look, how deep it goes. Damn, I wanna see it. Yeah, we might have to. Mm. Oh, I know exactly where that is. J Street, where is it? That looks like, well, the India's a hearse. So it has to be where the, um, the hearse spot is. They have brought the. Uh -huh. Is that by Walgreens? That's pretty deep. Where'd all that can go? <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I want to see it. Very nice. Erie, Florida. I spelt honey on it. Lost cemeteries of Tampa Bay. Oh yeah, mini lightning. We have some really, really um, fantastic folklore here. And Florida lore, I'm really, really excited about this. I want um, all of these. So I'm trying to actually just get in contact with the people. I um, A few weeks ago, I made it as far as finding the email address, but I'm not, I did not write anything yet. Because uh, I want the whole um, series, but 22 bucks, <laughs> it's, it's so tiny, but it's so, it's valuable information because I can never find um, a lot of Florida books, and I do look, the Florida Seashells book, $16.99, and I haven't been able to find it for less than 150 anywhere else, and um, especially in my area, and this one is just such a cute. Let's see. In the old days on Indian River, it would sometimes be quite late as we motored by a small boat from Coco to Courtenay, nine miles north on Merritt Island. And if it were after dark, we would set up in a bow. Oh. What the heck? We would set up in the... <laughs> I really need to practice reading out loud. This is a great, great way to practice, I think. Um, um, let me... Where did I go? Okay, so... Mare Island. And if it were after dark, we would set up in the bow a pole which held a chicken wire basket. And in this, we would start a fire of lightwood, or heart pine, which would burn quite merrily, giving off a dense black smoke, by the way. As we chugged northward, northward <laughs> Mullet would be attracted by the light, and there was seldom a trip we didn't catch from seven to a dozen fine fish weighing up to four pounds, which I leaped at the fire and dropped into our boats. Sport? No. Good eating? Yes. On Chase's dock of the banana or I'm sorry, never <laughs> really. Hey, I like I read all this myself outside, and I, I I feel like like a, a little narrator, and then I try to do that here. Okay. On Chase's dock in the Bahamas. Oh my God! Let me just have some. I can't watch the news anymore. My my mind's in rehabilitation mode. <laughs> on Chase's dock on the Banana River side of Merritt Island, many boxes of oranges from the island would be stocked up waiting for a steamer to haul them to Jacksonville's Clyde Line ships, which would sail for New York each day. The end of this dock boasted of but four feet of water, 
Banana River was literally filled with fish back about 1913. Three or four of us homesteaders would often get clubs from limbs of fallen pine trees on shore and go out on the dock to about three feet of water and string out to the north. Fish in flight seldom run under a pier in shallow water. And when we were about six feet apart in the water, we would rush towards the shore driving the red fish or channel bass ahead of us and when they reached the shallow waters near the shore they would mill around and were able to pound them we were able to pound them over their heads with our clubs we could have killed any number we chose but we would take a dozen or more ashore and cutting off about eight inches the tender parts of the tail so the fish fry fish fry that far surpass any which delight Floridians today <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see it going there um, but fantastic no it's a very abundant um, it's still really abundant um, as far as uh, being able to forage or fish and um, <laughs> I just got caught by this. Nothing makes a, sm a small boy so mad as to have his dog follow the boy he, de he detests most. <laughs> wow, ration stamps. We were just talking about that. During the latter part of World War II, um, I was one of a small group of special agents of the federal government whose duty called them to investigate the pranks of other members of federal agencies. We operated in all 48 states and looked only to Washington, D.C. for orders. Our cases included suspects from all over the government, um, authors Florida War <laughs> by Vernon Lamb. Lame. Lame. Um, oh, <laughs> Hope everyone's having a beautiful day that sees this. I feel like there's just too much silence in here and as soon as I stop rambling I am consumed by it. And it's only when I'm streaming is the silence is deafening because I'm not streaming, it's quite relaxing. I really wish I was able to play music. Wow. And that amethyst bead on the copper like glows. Switching that, switching that, sweet confusion. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't say. Dr. John is stuck in my head. I was showing Snap Boom. I haven't seen a lot of these performances since I was a kid. And um, I had a lot of like con concerts on DVD, like older concerts, and um, like uh, for like like the last waltz, uh, the band's last um, concert, which essentially um, like a full-on concert slash festival, but like very 
Eric and Shu. And, uh, God, just about everyone. And, um, of course, Woodstock. And that was, just, you know, I think that was one of the most impressive things. I mean, how many people went and, like, only, like, three people died or something like that? I know it's, um, uh, I don't know. I, th I, I, I don't think it's um, overdone or anything. I think that was one of the coolest concerts to be able to see like um, and watch today. And just about everyone play it there. Same thing with uh, Monterey Pop and um, there's Miami. I haven't seen any footage really, just a few in, like shows in passing uh, from Miami. Or is it Palm Beach Pop Festival? Here and um, so that's something I have to really remember to really just look it up so I don't forget. Sometimes I have them all very slick in my head, or hair, and um, <laughs> it starts like rolling and it feels so hard. So the set last week. 1969, King Crimson. Iron Butterfly, Country Joe and the Fish, Johnny Winter, Pacific Gas and Electric, Sweetwater, The Chambers Brothers, The Rugby's, uh, Grand Funk Railroad. <laughs> Is there something in my hair? I don't know. <laughs> um, Grandpa Gorilla, Janice Joplin, King Crimson, Pacific Gas and Electric, Rotary Connection, Sly and the Family Stone, Spirit, Spooky Tooth, The Birds, The Bell Fudge, Wavy Gravy, uh, Grand Funk Railroad again, Jefferson Airplane, Steppenwolf, Terry Reed, The Birds, and The Stones. And that was 1969 in November. Here, Palm Beach County, and um, oh, maybe that's it. I'm slipping. I was scared to this. I really want to watch um footage of it because I've only heard stories. And um, I actually have a friend that was there and like um, just such a trip and uh, lost a Clark's Desert boot in the mud. And <laughs> it's such a cool story. Palm Beach Pop Festival. I'm putting on a seed now. You're a seed. Oh, David Wilson. Ben. <clears throat> kind of taking it easy today. I missed uh, my friend's memorial yesterday. It's just it's so far and on. Um, but figured have a nice chill productive day. I've um, <coughs> gotten a few of these made. I'm, right now I'm working on uh, filling a table for to get back vending because we have a lot of green markets and all that so starting to stock up and this these are all charm uh, pretty much charm bracelets but necklaces so what I'm going to do is have like um multiple charms like this has oops this has quite a few little random things on it and that way people could take them off and assemble them as they choose and they'll be different charms so like, you could pick exactly which one and don't thank me to put on Etsy because I think the choosing charm will get a little confusing through there but um always through Instagram. I prefer like custom pieces anyway. And this stuff is on the more simple side. I'm just essentially making chain. Takes forever, I will say that, but I really enjoy the cathartic process and being able to use, um, put a use to this uh, electric wire. And they're just, they're so sturdy. It's the sturdiest chain I've ever been able to make. I, I use wire and all kinds of stuff. And I've used plenty of things from the craft store, like proper hook and or eye pins, and um, it's just 
it tarnishes yeah but also it chips like the it's like plated or something yeah, i just really like how the copper looks makes everything glow my hands are still stained from all these probably have an another few weeks of corpse corpse things i gotta stop calling it corpse things because <laughs> i stain the crap out of my hands and um <laughs> the next day it goes from fuchsia to like black and it's can't help but, but to associate with um, <laughs> maybe like haunted house hands. Try to get nice and circular, but also not go overboard. Sometimes, like when I make the other stuff, I get a little too hung up on the tiny little things that nobody notices. And really my aim is just to make it uh, sturdy and so it doesn't get caught on anything and then but I could hold stuff. And lasts like forever. I don't really see these degrading. And that's what I really want to avoid. That's why I kinda of stopped using uh, craft supplies other than Mr. Rosin's resin and um, stuff here and there usually accumulating from like craft sales or yard sales in random places um it just it doesn't seem to last and even i got really nice seemingly uh leather cord and within a week just the the little imprints that the charm even just like a, a charm uh cracked it and um that wasn't uh <laughs> Something I expected, so I just, I just I just want to make stuff that lasts, and that could be rough housed with an um, like adventure friendly, because so that where I I wear everything and um I try oh that's cool just a crystal chip, but hmm. I do you want to mess with these? on without a split. There's a few that have like natural splits. These are porcupine quills. I got them as a gift uh, by this man who is um, unfortunately incarcerated but I was um, passed down if you will as a bead collection. That's another thing too, like a lot of these, these supplies have the wildest stories, I, I really mean that. And um, I really like connecting with people on any possible level, especially uh, creatively. And um, for a long time I was just like, kind of just too shy to even... Like I've always sold stuff on Etsy. But I didn't always post it, like certainly not on my Facebook or anything. And um, it's just something I always did, but not really. Ooh, perfect. Yes. Almost there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That is nice. Porcupine quill. And I have a wire running through it, and it's got an end to it. I really need to find that lighter. But this might be a little too short. Because I have to be able to wrap it. I just want to see, because it could just be a temporary. Might be able to get like, one wrap out of that. Cause some things I don't have to really worry about um, putting multiple wraps in, especially if it's just gonna hang there and no tension will be placed on it. And I could put this on my wish wish branch. I have a wish branch. My uh, bay leaf tree died and I could not 
throw away the tree for the life of me. I like it a lot. Perkwinkle. I have a whole nother bottle of them. Because these are quite thin. <clears throat> I think that these were picked out for like beadwork. The ones I have are a little thicker and I think those will be a little bit more uh, less translucent with the wire sticking through it. There is something over here. Oops. Oh, the lighter. Mm. It's in one or two places.
Oh my god, I knew it. I swear I looked there earlier. I just wanted to see if this would work. It's an oven safe dish, but this is what I'm just going to use real quick. I just wanted to see if this lighter is strong enough to pull it up. wanted to for a second and it did blow up a little bit huh <laughs> maybe a little bit <laughs> I tried I'm gonna try it on a thinner wire um Mm -hmm. <laughs> it works. So you can see it is just use it. So hold the bead. And see it's red. That was just with that little lighter. And it does, um, I can hammer it to kind of like rework hard on it for, I think that's the proper terminology. But I'll just wrap it extra. Because this will just dangle on something. Oh, I didn't hear it. Yeah. 
can <laughs> hear anything. I need a wire that's a hair thinner, I mean thicker, but not as thick as the one I was just using. If you have a bunch of them, like that, as <laughs> I will make a good one. This is very, very thin wire. I'll just take this. I'm always looking for scraps. This is scraps of paper. But also, uh, try is really addicting. And the stuff it creates, I find it beautiful. It's an excellent gift, especially for wives, girlfriends, mothers, sisters, anybody. I mean, I'm trying to make more stuff, um, uh, like specifically men's jewelry too. Like, um, long. Oh, from Ireland. Very cool. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's not expected, or it was very unexpected. Um, because I, 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 I don't know. I um, have a tendency to to ramble, but I um, also have a tendency to overthink a lot, and um, it's an unintended unintended um, the benefit of streaming because I <clears throat> last few years has just been um just a hor horrible mess for just about everybody on this planet. And I I don't know. I need to better put it into words because. It has impacted me very, in my opinion, positively. And, um, kind of just learning more and more about ourselves as humans and, like, what's real and what's not. And fortunately, that's one decent thing about today. It's pretty dang easy to <laughs> spot what's real. And, like, I feel like a lot of people would say the opposite unless they thought about it for a split second like you could you could just tell when someone's not like um uh speaking like from their own thoughts i guess and so like yeah the ai <coughs> ai stuff maybe like that stuff it's hard to tell if it's real or not in some cases but i think i'm having an easier time than ever I've always watched every single like news channel I could. Um, I, I don't watch anything that I. I mean, I won't not watch something because I don't just don't agree. Um, I actually want to watch it to find any form of. And like sometimes also like if I'm in perfect agreement with somebody, like even Snapo has agreed with us. So we try to do the whole devil's advocate thing, and it leads to a lot more common ground. And I think um, people are avoiding any form of. Um, not confrontation, but like thoughts, cause like, I don't know what to think about anything, that's why I gave up. <laughs> I don't be at this desk, like, you know, I, I cannot believe this little lighter. Oh, I can, I can, it's a little jet lighter. And it doesn't need that much space. And That's kind of like, um, oh, what 
to use that one. Oh, hey! Yeah. It's, it has little facets in it. Oh, need a larger. Didn't fill it up quite as much. Oops. Just a lot too. The beads in the background is making my eyes focus weird. Like the camera. Equalize it. I don't think it's gonna get that big. So this one. This is really, really thin wire, and it works with sterling too. Uh, ball it falling up. And gold. I'm trying to um, find some more broken jewelry lots on eBay because every now and then I get a few uh, mismatched earrings, and a lot of times the little wire things or the things that hold the earring on are gold. And because um, a lot of times people lose the original ones and use the earring box from another pair, and then you end up um, with gold earring box in the back of just you know some plastic pearl earrings. And I uh, made a ring that I actually sold a long time ago that had a big chunk of gold in the center. Do you ever metal detect or um, mudlark? Because all I could think is if I lived like like in Scotland or Ireland, UK, and anywhere, anywhere like old, I, I guess I could just say, um, I would be digging holes everywhere. Well, not digging holes everywhere, but like I'd be metal detecting everywhere. And mud larking for for sure, especially if you have any ports near you. And um, it's uh, it's really addicting watching people pull stuff out of um, the waters over there because of how old and how long like and like y'all's lands have been inhabited. It just I feel like there's treasure everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's going. Just like that. Oh, well, one I wrapped a little longer. I forgot to compare the two. <laughs> but I guess next one I'll make the same as this one with three wrap. And so I'll have a nice little like swoop one. The center will be a little longer. But really nice. And I know you can't really see, but the the head of the pin that's holding the bead on is bright red. And um, if you after you get that copper red hot, you put it in water, and it quenches and turns a beautiful cherry red. And I'm really glad this works because this just shows like you could go to the gas station and pick up a lighter. Micro torches. A lot uh, easier, and I know a lot of restaurant places carry them. Um, the uh, smoke shops or head shops, I believe, is the proper term. Oh, head shops. I just wondered why they were called head shops. 
Just like for your head, man. Like it midi. I don't really connect with that for some reason. I always loved head shops when I was a kid because uh, before there was a local record store, the only spots that sold records. <clears throat> Trying to get one. Kind of this uniform. Don't try not to worry too much about that, but. That is why I like the um, kind of older beads and the handmade beads because uh, the whole like um, beads or crystals are very very toxic to breathe in and um, I know like the people that are carving a lot of the wholesale beads can't be breathing in the best condition. And that's one of many reasons why I avoid uh, new beads, the, like the specific ones. But if you can't salvage them, you know, don't keep yourself from creating. Don't blame yourself for. I just overthink things. So I think I read on the package that it's reversible, refillable. So that one is kind of like the same as the other one. If anybody has any news of the world, I haven't really been watching. Just um, like to do some self collecting in between all that because um whew. Like, <laughs> holy crap holy trucks yeah i was watching all kinds of um just people i grew up listening to like like uh Almond Brothers Band, Eagles, Bad Company, um, James Taylor, and I, I haven't seen a lot of the live performances, a lot of albums, and listened to it a lot, but you know, there's only so much you can watch at once, and I love it. It was it was such a treat being able to see, and a lot of the uh, live performances were like were only posted a few years ago. And it's just crazy, there's so much footage. And obviously there would be, but, um, just kind of like, really a treat to be able to see, you know, the, um, old performances. And like, like the James Taylor BBC, there's two <clears throat> BBC, uh, concerts, only a few songs each. It's, 60s and 70s are definitely, um, my personal, everybody I feel like has a decade or era that they, um, kind of, like, fantasize most about, <laughs> and, uh, I think mine's definitely the 60s and 70s, and, um, like, fishing, camping, I feel like there's, um, a lot of, I don't know, 
looking like I I get I didn't, I wasn't alive back then, so I have no idea. But um, I love watching the advertisements, and of course the style was impeccable in my opinion. And like fitted, but also like uh, it's good clothes it seems. Like really like 60s to early 80s, I think are my favorite um, decades to think about. My favorite objects too. And I mean the music. Music was straight fire. These are some really, really nice wood beads from a broken mala that was missing a lot of the beads. I saw this one over. I want to make kind of a chatelaine. I'm sorry for mispronouncing that. For camping, like a pen with all the tools in it. <laughs> Put a nutmeg on it. So I'm trying to find a little, like a grater. Like a tiny like keychain one that I could um, like uh, wrap in copper or something. Roxy music, yes, a boy of course. Yeah, Roxy music. A hey, um, Mother of Pearl is one of my favorite songs in existence, and um, <clears throat> it's never really likes uh, every dream of a heartache. They're just great. They're genuinely from another planet. Reminds me of uh, Alien Sex Fiend. I never really hear people mention. Wow, that's kind of nice. Hmm, what am I going to do with this? trying to quickly like strategically wrap it so none of the pieces new and I could solder it. Those are the things I also use to make um, like flowers. I just anytime I have a flower thing and I need something in the center, like pistons, if you will, because that is really nice. Or maybe like a fabric flower, a little really otherworldly. Dang, that would be intense. Um, yeah, I bet you put on a great show. Yeah. I, that's another one I'm only recently. Um, I've started seeing, because um, I've seen like the music videos and stuff like that, but live performances, wild. And um, that's like another huge benefit of the internet to be able to compile all this and like be able to access it. Because all of this, like, um, even, oh god, like Boston, I've never seen Boston live. Like every now and then like I was able to like remember when I was um, watching, I just I always forget I suppose. And god, they were so good. And um, I don't know why, I, never, I was always really into Boston. Cause the Boston self-titled album I feel like is just, um, I don't know. Something special. I believe the story along that too is like the producer or whoever um, like was gonna produce the album for them like had nothing to add. It was just perfection. Are they? 
I saw in the comments that they weren't. Pure frames with bad company? What the heck? What is what is the Hall of Fame even for? <laughs> yeah, that was like a long time ago. Dude. Like I, I hear always like so many people getting inducted and sometimes all these people from the long since past. And I guess I can't fit any everyone. I don't know much about the rock and roll hall, hall of fame. I feel like it's um that it's uh Like an, another fronty thing, like um, big, whatever. It's, I don't know what to call it. Stuff that's kind of based in or around like entertainment. Because um, a lot of it's just, I think, business stuff and real artists. But it's, um, like, hmm. Mariah Carey. I, I I guess the the name of it throws me off because um I feel like maybe it's, it's kind of like a broad uh, just music hall of fame and that just always has thrown me off like it being called rock and roll. I don't know. It's always confused me more than anything. I thought it was going to storm today, that's why I really want to just start doing this outside to get as much fresh air as possible. Because it is storm going to be getting into stormy season, which I'm actually quite stoked to stream. Uh, just for the storms. I'm just gonna do right now is I'm actually making a ton of um, blank, and then I'll start to go off with color combinations or which ones will go together. Really nice tandem handmade bead. Mm. I'm trying <laughs> gonna be experimenting with letter beads. Yeah, um, I do write a lot. Um, I never really called it poetry because it doesn't rhyme, <laughs> and um, it's more so just like observations. And I've never really done anything with it. Um, I have notebooks and notebook full of just random observations and notes, but. It's kind of what Subtropical Botanica is supposed to be. It's like a dumping ground for, um, and for anybody who wants to dump stuff on it. Um, but so <laughs> I'm trying to find some clever things to spell out in letter beads to make uh, long necklaces that have um, some writings on it. And even uh, belts and uh, purse straps. Is hopefully very soon I will land on a sewing machine to start like idolizing on there. Um, I have about six sewing machines because anytime I see them, I'll pick it up if you know it's the alternative is it's gonna go to the garbage. Um, and it'll work for a while and then the timing gets off. And I now, right now, I don't have a single, a single working sewing machine. Before I actually um, started to work on uh, Edible Even with Snapper, I uh, was getting into quilting. I sucked at it. <laughs> but it's fun. I really liked uh, making 
like sewing the random shapes and then pressing them to reveal these really crisp lines. I have immense, <coughs> immense respect for any craftsman, any people. I, I have general respect for people. I think we, I think we manage ourselves pretty dang well. Because at every moment, I'm just like too aware we're hurtling through space or something. Because like, I know I don't do things to help. Sometimes if I can't sleep, I'll put live streams of the ISS on. And then I'll wake up and just be like, hey. <laughs> I think it's um, kind of hmm. fully embracing that though. I'm jumping in the ocean every chance I get. Uh, what time is it? Holy crap. Time really melts when I'm uh, in here. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I got any sun today. I should at least like get sun. Sun is very important to me. To a lot. When I work outside, I, I, I jump from shady spot to shady spot because the sun is very intense. And, um, I, it, I could feel it if I, like, don't get sun. I swear to God, it's like, um, a solar, a solar panel. Um, uh, so I think it's soft, but he thinks of the sun as emotional. Like a daily, like, an, like a meme just for, like, a energy shot. <laughs> Medicinal sun. This medicinal sun exposure. Because obviously, two sun isn't, you know, fun, but no sun is um, until it affects you. Okay, I'm oh! Very cool! Yeah! Um, actually, I have that right here. I, um, I think it's this. I have all my wood burning stuff plugged in, ready to go. Because I, I genuinely like, love trying uh, different crafts and making useful objects. And it was just for, I did split, but it's for um, incense and that is a fantastic idea to make more of. I did put the elements on the side. And, um, yeah. So I think that's on my to-do list now. Because I'm going to start making incense ones again. But not only making them, show how I make them. Because self-burning incense is very easy to make. And, um, slice with... A lot of people are downing trees right now. Uh, a lot of developing happening. And, um, I wonder if anybody could get me some sliced wood. Because there's a few reasons why I want the sliced wood. Um, the, what's it called? The incense thing. This it gets really, really hot. But I have a larger one, so I want to make bigger ones. That are the, uh, calendar. The, um, uh, a pagan calendar, if you will. I don't know really. Pagans to me is an umbrella term. Celtic calendar. Um, just a calendar. The wheel of the year. There it is. Wheel of the year. And uh, I was trying to figure out round stuff to do that on today, and I didn't think about that. Um, but yeah, no, I can make a just about anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually have a huge one outside. Um, it was kind of like a little, like, working table, but, because I, I, I really enjoy, um, uh, symbolism, and, um, tarot cards to me are, is essentially flashcards for symbolism, and, like, great, like, way to unlock, like, not unlock, but, like, stimulate ideas and thought flow, and, um, the art is just, it's almost like, a, I mean, it is a language. Symbolism is a language. And, um, 
So I made a table out of a log. It's a huge pentacle. It's outside. It's a metalworking log now. Um, I had to bring the anvil in finally, though, because it's getting a little rusty. try to get some wood slices very soon. I mean, this one is split. That's the only issue. <laughs> Funny story with this too is, um, oh cool, full notch in it. Uh, a kid was selling these on a foxtail. It was yard sale. It's so fun, foxtail. Foxtail. And, uh, <laughs> I bought the vlog a few slices of the wood and this tail for like, I think five bucks or something. I was like a turkey leg. And the kid just start, like, I walked away and you just hear the kid run away going, I told you someone would buy it. <laughs> uh, Trapper was out here. His hands and uh, just gets it some, some pieces and uh, like a wingspan and um, some other things. There were tortoise shells that weren't like hunted or anything like that, but anyways. But I wasn't sure <laughs> if it was um, cool to you know, to own, and I, I know I'd be taking pictures. Um, of them and stuff like that. And as soon as I ID'd them, I turned around and they were gone. Oops. <laughs> Someone scored. Uh, there are trappers and antique collectors. Um, the woman here, there's a f state fair and uh, there's um, a historical little village called Yesteryear Village. And she worked there and I've seen her my whole life. That's my favorite part of the fair. And um, it was actually a all of her stuff and she passed away her lawnmower like her lawnmower tumbled into a canal out here and she drowned in a foot of water life is <sighs> holy trucks um a lot <laughs> and constantly reminded of that and it was the biggest honor i've ever randomly walked into to be able to acquire some of this stuff. And um, one of the other things turns out she did was had a camper full of antiques and old pioneer tools. And she would go to schools and to teach how the um, old Florida pioneers lived. And yeah, so I got, I got, I do got plans for my future. I, I want to carry on that like la la lady's legacy in like, you know, maybe 10, 15 years. <laughs> Cool. It's like, and she had uh, you are enough written everywhere in her bedroom. Like it was wild to see somebody I like looked forward to like that that install installation at the fair my whole life. And... Oh, of course. Oh, pop. That's somebody I haven't thought of in a long time. And it was about the time that I would listen to Dropkick Murphys. I really, really like every um, genre of music. And, um, so, please do, never hesitate to add more, because music is, yeah. I have a song for everything, that's 100% true, and I have a song for everything, because I always ask recommendations, and I always, um, shoot, that reminds me. Because, yeah. um. I, I, I have to say, I'm, I, I don't leave this desk very often, that's true, and I'm, I'm really trying to spend as much time at, at this desk, um, because this is where I make pretty much everything, and music, <laughs> music allows me to, gosh, to drift away for hours while getting a ton done. I can't really do that watching TV. I try with uh, documentaries and stuff like that, but... <clears throat> they'll start describing something and then I look see what they're describing and then I start watching it and then so I tried lectures uh, but they talked too slow often so I tried speeding them up and playing them faster speed and 
I couldn't find many that didn't have slideshows, and they would start describing something and be like, what? <laughs> start watching it. And, um, mu music is like the best way to nostalgia trope, too. Because I can't, I, I looked up the Pogs, Pogs, Pogs songs, nothing's jumping out, like, nostalgically, but I know, I know them, and I, um, can't wait to listen to, be like, oh, yeah, because, hey, um, started listening to, like, like, choosing music, specific music to listen to at a very young age, like, um, I mean, it would be Pinback, like, when I was really, really young, and that's one of, like, the gateway bands that I was like, oh, because I didn't grow up with bad music. I did like Spice Girls, still do, um, but, like, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, they freaked me out, like, the, the their hair, their every, the, the, the synchronized dances, and, like, yeah, they can all be done well, but... <clears throat> mm -mm. Uh, when I was a kid, I was really into Boston and um, Pink Floyd, but Sid Barrett Pink Floyd. Uh, <clears throat> like, I had birthdays for him. <laughs> and then, like, 2006, when he died, I had a little funeral. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, uh, I don't talk this much anymore. I go through, um, like, heavy streaming, where I'm doing so many little, like, things like this, that I'm sitting in one place long enough and keeps my mind active, and then I kind of have a tendency to disappear, but I don't think that's going to happen. I, oh God, I have a new lease on life, I'm a born again Floridian, if you will, <laughs> if you will, and, um, like, I suppose until, until winter returns. But next winter, I plan on having some, like, real wool everything. And, yeah. And uh, always looking for brand names from cold climates. Because casual brands there are not casual brands here. And stuff that's made... Or it's just made to look warm in the stores here. This a lot of the um, thrift stores don't even sell winter coats, which I still think is crazy. It, they take up a lot of room, so there's oh, it's, so that's what it was. It's a peacock hair thing. Uh, the peacocks are uh, local peacocks. They really like it here. I mean, I haven't asked them or anything, but I assume they're they're uh, <laughs> they're enjoying their lives. <laughs> um, there's this place in Lantana called High Ridge that's known for tons and tons of peacocks, and of course the peacocks in St. Augustine, which were brought over. Oh, that's incredible because um, there's a lot of the. Uh, full white peacocks that some of the most regal creatures just casually strolling through those and gators. If I could have a store anywhere, it would probably be St. Augustine for sure. St. Augustine is, um, a few hours north, and uh, that's where I believe our oldest fort is. And I did some magnet fishing over there. I did uh, for Saka's birthday actually, and um, I did pull up a harmonica, but it wasn't old or anything. But it was still a treat to be able to find something. And um, why do we? 
still, I don't know. My only focus is, I can't stop thinking about swimming. Like, I wish I was swimming right now. And, um, yeah, swimming is, I think, my number one thing. In Colorado, it was really cool because there was just, it was so cold, but the, there were indoor pools everywhere, which were really, really fun. <laughs> oh, Sophia. Oh, yeah, Joe Stormer. Mm. Yeah, Paul Rayleigh. Yeah, Boston. Do I pick Boston? I really want to go to Boston um, for the age of it. And um, I, I, I don't want to take that drop kick. I, I, want, I want to mud lark and real bad. And um, I'm sure people are very nice. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> scary. But yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're a rambunctious rambunctious bunch up there. But anything. I love me some chaos. And um but the old ports there I can't imagine it would be um very difficult to find some incredible things. What is that looking like? Is that just going on? I could, um, when I was a kid, I used to get in so much trouble. There's, um, I believe from the 80s, Dr. Uh, Crucifix. Really good punk band. And, um, let me see what they're... I used to get in so much trouble because of their name. I went to a tiny little Catholic school. Doc Dart, though, he's the man. 1987, Wisconsin came out. Uh, yeah, really, because I mean, to this day, I, I put on Wisconsin. That's another cool thing to see them live. It's um, wild. And there's a lot more footage than I like, ever think there is. Let me grab some more coffee. Oh, I forgot to tell this. Let me put this one. Oh, I... <clears throat> I've seen my truck for a really long time.
So, I know what heart pine is. Heart pine is um, that core of the pine that's the super like condensed open time. Oh. I still can't believe this work. So it's out there demonstrating. Um. <laughs> it's coffee. <laughs> it could probably use some more milk, but. I just sip on it. I like coffee and water and iron brew. Iron brew is um a lot crisper than the sodas here, which I like carbonated beverages, but uh, they're too syrupy here. And um, preferably in a can. I don't know why. I, I feel like it stays colder and. Um, I'm gonna take a few sips of life. I'm pretty good. I'm trying to get to the point where I mean, water really is my favorite drink. At what? Well, I'll be honest. Milk is my favorite drink. <laughs> Whole milk. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, there's some SNL skit where the lady was I don't know trying to be off-putting. I know, no, not off-putting, but like so they're just. Like, I guess that was, like, the whole point of the character. And she's like, yeah, after something, like, I might have to get up and chug milk. And I laughed so hard, and no one else did. And I was like, yeah. And no, 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 no. I don't know what happened to, like, drinking milk. I, I thought that was pretty normal, but I guess it's not anymore. I am running low on uh, headpins. I'm really glad last time I made a few, I ended up making a ton because I'm still using the ones I made a few, oh, probably like last year. Ooh, that sip of coffee made me hungry. And I did not eat lunch, I just realized. But there's stew, um, beef and, well, beef and beef, <laughs> beef and oxtail, but, um, do a lot of manual labor, especially out here in the swamps, and, yeah, so, I don't know why I always feel the need to defend my diet, it's, a, it's such a simple, like, beef, potatoes, celery, carrots, um, like, oop, say thanks, like, uh, you know, I don't know, I, don't, I get so nervous talking about, like, what do you use? Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> I don't know why, yeah, what an interesting time period, because I never really thought about, you know, I was pretty much like um, stuff you could just like throw in the oven hole or combine without thought, which is pretty much like meat and vegetables. And um, Sabah's mom actually uh, got us for Christmas an instant pot. I have no idea how much it would change the way that it's just so much more energy. So much less stress, because it could even just be beef and celery or beef and cabbage, and it's a fantastic stew. And um, even on the hot days, I never get sick of it. Like, um, I don't always have to eat food for, um, like, specific stuff. I, I'm pretty utilitarian with um, food. I mean, it's delicious, and it's very hearty, and... I really like it with a uh, thick mustard, like where you can see the seeds. 
I got like a seed, a mustard seed, mustard, <laughs> and um, I really don't want to deviate from that because for the longest time, energy has been an issue for me as well as um, like just feeling, yeah, it's just energy because I uh, wasn't really eating, I was eating to get full I suppose. <laughs> and it's got, it's, I'm not going to be able to unsee that, and it's got a, a footrest thing to make it even look better. I have to put, I, I'm trying to find a shelf because I'm like in the middle of trying to figure out what um, the next few months of crafting, like what projects I want to do. <clears throat> and I've been going through everything and every jar, every shelf, like this, I still have to <laughs> This is stuff that blew away, and this is the most random stuff. Like this really old Girl Scouts patch with the orange. I really like that. And um, a bunch of like carved bone stuff. Just a bunch of old things. Stem. And I'm slowly, I'm slowly trying to get through it all. But every little bit is something. So it's kind of tedious. I got these really interesting sterling silver beads mixed in with this very cool unicorn enamel. I think that would be cool. Um, anything, honestly. That is, this is a lot of cut. And this is really, to me, it's very. Uh, it was a whole necklace, but. Um, the pendant has a carved ram, but this is my favorite part, is the, and of course I'm not going to be able to get it. Huh. This carved bone, little stains. I love that though, like, very clever. And then, is it under here still? A way to get this glue off this box. It was in the garbage. It had broken shells on it, like something collapsed on it. Is it a in the garbage of a friend's house who's moving? But but it kept. It's kind of gross. <laughs> it's like well under dust, and I've been digging incessantly. Anyway, the um, whole thing is like that round. The whole, there's nothing more but the two pieces of wood, and the whole movement is, or the whole hinge is carved in. I thought that was cool. So I have to um, figure out. I have a lot of things like that where I want to um, give it a new life, but haven't got there yet. <laughs> and um, I have a box of chandeliers, but I was able to replace the stones because a lot of them had the identical stones. And you cannot tell what's from it and what's not. And um, because <clears throat> there's a lot of broken ones, but I got three of them from probably the 80s little uh, chandeliers that would go on a light fixture. And I don't know how to ship them, but <clears throat> there's three of them. Can't imagine putting. I, I really love them. I never thought about that. I actually, I found this in the alleyway too in Lake Worth. I always wonder if it bothers people because it's so loud. I'm always so quiet and it's very nice so especially like doing a little plant um stuff now that it's spring <coughs> i feel like i'm gonna get it dirty so i just i don't like <laughs> um i wanted a pink chair and uh, i didn't really think uh i didn't think snapper was 100 percent serious 
I love it a lot. That's why I don't touch it. But yeah, it feels it feels so fresh. Sitting in it and it rolls so effortlessly. When it's just me in here and I'm going back and forth like a mad woman, <laughs> I fall a lot. This only has four wheels, so <laughs> and that square um, allows for a lot of a lot of tipping over. <laughs> Let's have a look. The bolts that are holding this on the chair are very, very um, shallow. <laughs> so every few months, it just it'll, it'll fall over, and I have to. <laughs> but I like it. It's um, it's a very interactive chair. <laughs> And, um, the people that actually tossed it in the alley had the outdoor decoration, decor they make Florida native gardens in people's yards. Uh, Benjamin Burrow, and, oh gosh, sometimes I'm really rotten with names, but I know they're the Burrows. Shout out local Lake Worth, um... Exterior designers. That's it. Exterior designers. Which I kind of thought it was just like left by somebody, but then I was like, ooh. Now I have a thing. I really respect the, their gardens. They're always like, um, I, I re already really like the Florida native plants and um, kind of like tropical. They're all like really sharp. Like I cannot imagine. Um, Florida, native Florida, before it was, um, I don't say colonized, but I'm, I'm scared, so, I don't know, before people moved on it. Uh, <laughs> and there were people there, the, I know in this area, the Yega and, um, the... Oh no, 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 communities because like that's it that's the perfect list to describe beaches dunes and marine or uh, yeah maritime forests beach forests um you'll see the lantern berries or uh gooseberries a lot and this wine that um tastes like uh cucumber and really really good if you look up florida edible cucumber wine <laughs> i'm sure it was Pine flatwoods, scrub forests, cypress swamp forests, prairies, forests of abundance of cabbage plants, marshes, sweat prairies, and tree islands. And um, the, the, the thing of landscape is unforgiving, but it's gorgeous. It really is. Salt palmetto is called salt. And there's a new vine, a new fun vine. Um, the, the thickest thorns, it, the vine looks like a rose, like, um, like a rose stem, but bigger, and, um, a vine is, it, it reaches to the heavens, I couldn't find where it went, and, um, I looked, <coughs> and, uh, I found it with my foot, of course, as you do, because, <laughs> uh, for the life of me, I can't keep shoes on my feet, I am really trying to find, um, like, See, when I was a kid, they showed these, like, gloves on TV, and it showed a dude with his hand in a shark mouth. And I was like, oh my god, so, like, in ten years, they're gonna have clothing made of this. And, like, I get there are some, like, intense suits, but I, I just want a pair of, like, ankle boots that... They're waterproof, but they're not too rigid, like, socks, kind of. 
for some reason it's been impossible to find. The closest I found were like ankle boots for like uh, swimming. The swimming, um, what is that called? Water shoes. <laughs> but, so I've been scanning like every type of activity to see what they wear and um, why they wear and what materials and fabrics it's made out of. Because then I'm really able to um, find something exactly for this habitat. Like, my, I, I call, I don't know if it's in this taste, I, re I don't mean anything, but I call my desert, my desert storm boots. And because they're, they're, um, uh, I don't know if they are or just designed after combat boots. The desert, the nice khaki ones, really breathable really light and I love them. I love them so much that I can't bring myself to wear them because it's very hard to, it's been really hard to find another pair. And um, yeah. so really looking for any form of uh, rugged wear, I suppose you could say, because um, I, I was looking at fly fishermen's, uh, their arsenal, <sighs> best, really good, and uh, golfing clothes. Are, are the two I've been landing on, like the long johns, because um, there's a lot of grasslands, but I couldn't find any with like, you know. I've been stepping in mulberries for like the last few weeks, so I don't even, I'm not even trying to traumatize anyone, but anyway, um, oh, this is a perfect chance to remind Paul Z why but um perfect chance to remind that there is this website called eat the weeds and other things too and it's a, a wealth of edible forageable knowledge <laughs> because there's so much food growing everywhere there really is and um between like whether it be purslane or almost i, I, I almost Need to, okay, um, Purslane, Florida Betany, like, there's a bunch, bunch of food, especially here in Florida, but in every, every zone, and, um, like, I'm really jealous of the people with, uh, berries, and, um, I'm, I'm just too curious, and I'm gonna, Oh, weird. I don't know what has happened. It, it just says, or, or it just like blanks everything out up here. So <laughs> it's a bad moment. But, um, hmm. I don't click the in chat actually because that ensures. Uh, this site has fed me through like so, so many random patches of life and out of hobby and so I think it's um, beyond valuable to know what is edible and just pops out of the ground. Like dollar weed here is a round leaf uh, indicative of wet ground like a lot of times they'll pop up for it with a leak and um, but it's edible. And quite tasty. Uh, plants for a few. <laughs> I'm not even mad at that ad. Plants for a few. Oh. Jesus, I must be hungry. I, 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 I put it in the chat and then I went and recopied the link and then went back to the chat to put the link that I just pasted. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to probably eat and um, finish the last few things I started, which are up here. Uh, so the last two, and then I'm going to start a bunch more. Um, I was hesitant to start a bunch um, until I finish the ones I started because I'm running low on this gauge, and which it ain't a thing. I have a bunch of um, wire, and they're they're all good for different types of chains 
and the thinner wires, and these dingleberries here, nice finer chain, so that's probably the ones I'm going to work on next, because I believe this is, yeah, that's that, so make a finer chain, and those will be uh, uh, way more fragile than these, these are quite sturdy, because the wire itself is quite sturdy. And you can actually solder this in place, and it'll look like a dope great. Like, there's a lot. Um, <sighs> no, you can't see that. This, oh, well, I keep doing my own secrets. Anyway, uh, so save these. I figured I needed a way to keep beads, um, because I'm trying to just stay outside. And, um,. I want to start taking the bike to the little nature spots that I know won't be there forever and I guess I'm crafting down there, I guess I'm, you know, good fresh air, some silence, I feel mind, because I've been spending a little too much time on, um, online, but that's not the issue, it's just the issue is the, <laughs> the concept that I'm ingesting, the news, but, but I, I feel it, ugh, I don't know, I don't know, um, I try to keep up with the news, because I kind of, um, uh, human feathered around. I wasn't just, I just, I, I focus on different things, I guess, and I didn't really know much about, um, who was who, and it's just, it's, it's very hopeless. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I can't even, like, put it into words. I'm, the thought. I'm sad now. Fucking hell. I just hope everyone has a beautiful night and make something if they want. And if not, <clears throat> have some really dope thoughts and come up with some good ideas. And have really good ideas. And embrace ideas. Any idea you can write down. And then just like, if you're not going to do anything with them, <clears throat> You don't have to show your face, just like, fill in like a tree and just be like, I had these ideas. And then somebody else will do them. Ideas are for re- like, I, okay, I'm, gonna, I, I'm very hungry right now and I'm gonna start <laughs> ranting about the magic of ideas. But see, I just put random beads and then I will chain these up like this on the go and I can just pull them off. And that way I don't have beads rolling everywhere. Um, and I could kind of organize my thoughts a little bit, because I usually have a, kind of a pile in front of me, unless I'm doing something specific, and then I have a bunch of little trays and little baggies, like my picnic basket. Uh, let's try to find them anywhere. I'm like, these are really interesting, it's, um, bone? I believe they're for button making. Could be wrong. I, I'm sure they had many uses, and I, I find them actually a lot of dead stock, which I do gotta pull that out because um, just I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta eat. <laughs> Happy trails! Thank y'all for hanging out, and please do feel free to come here anytime. I'm pretty much hey, let's do it. Um, Happy trails! I actually adopted because I. I was walking home one night, and you know how, like, you're walking in a back alley at night, and, like, you just, like, see some creepy bushes, and you're like, whoa, those are some creepy bushes. As soon as I thought that, this dude crawls out of the bushes with a giant, uh, lunchbox of records, and he's like, Jamie, you're Jamie, right? I was just like, yeah, and he's like, well, uh, um, said that you liked records, and he gave me the records. Um, I rolled them home, and uh, one of it was Quicksilver Messenger Service, Happy Trails, and um, that was the one he like had in his hands and handed to me, and I uh, had um, the other one that was really impactful was the Buffalo Springfield Retrospective, but I've never heard the song Mr. Soul before, and uh, like Kind Woman, and there's another one on that. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to listen to right now. I'm going to know what that means. And, um, yeah. Uh, have y'all a perfect day because we live on a very dope planet. Like, kind of the dopest planet that we know of currently. 
Unless, like, I mean, Diamond Rain is pretty cool, but, you know, <laughs> I don't think anyone will last very long to be able to appreciate the diamonds falling from the sky. <laughs> I appreciate that.